Part 3. The Hadith that says getting stabbed in the head with an iron needle is better than touching a woman. Furthermore, some contemporary Muslim scholars have based their ruling concerning the prohibition of shaking hands with women on the hadith narrated by al-Tabari and al-Bihachi on the authority of Makil ibn Yasar that the Messenger of Allah said, it would be better for one of you to have himself stabbed on the head with an iron needle, than to touch a woman that is illegal for him. Here, the following should be noted. 1. The scholars and imams of hadith have not declared the authenticity of this hadith. Some of them say that its narrators are trustworthy, but this is not enough to prove the authenticity of the hadith, because there is a probability that there is an interruption in the chain of narrators, or there was a hidden cause behind this hadith. That is why Muslim jurists in the periods that follow the death of the Prophet have not based their ruling on the prohibition of shaking hands with women on this hadith. 2. Some Hanafi and Maliki jurists stated that the prohibition is not proven unless there is a certain Qati piece of evidence, such as textual proofs from the glorious Quran or authentic hadiths on which there is no suspicion regarding the chains of narrators. 3. If we suppose that the above-mentioned hadith is authentic, it is unclear to me that the hadith indicates that it is prohibited for males and females who are not marams to shake hands. That is because the phrase, touch a woman that is illegal for him, does not refer to the mere touching without desire, as happens in normal handshaking. But the Arabic word, al-mas, is used in the Shari texts of the Quran and the Sunnah refers to one of two things. 1. Sexual intercourse, as reported by Ibn Abbas in his commentary to Almighty Allah's saying, for ye have touched women, he stated that, touching, in the Quran refers figuratively to sexual intercourse. This is clear in the following Quranic verses that read, she said, my Lord, how can I have a child when no mortal hath touched me? Al-Imran, 47, and, if ye divorce them before ye have touched them, Al-Baqarah, 237. 2. Actions that precede sexual intercourse, such as foreplay, kissing, hugging, caressing, and the like. This is reported from our righteous predecessors in the interpretation of the word, Mulamasa. Al-Hakim stated in his Al-Mustadrak Allah as Sahihain, Al-Bukhari and Muslim have narrated many hadiths that show that the meaning of the word lambs refers to actions that precede sexual intercourse. Among them are a. The hadith narrated by Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, the hands fornicate, their fornication is the touch. b. The hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas that the Prophet said, you might caress her. c. The hadith narrated by Muslim that Ibn Masid is reported to have said that a person came to Allah's messenger and told him that he had kissed a woman or touched her with his hand or did something like this. He inquired of him about its expiation. It was on this occasion that Allah, glorified and exalted be he, revealed this Quranic verse that reads, Establish worship at the two ends of the day, and in some watches of the night. Lo, good deeds and all ill deeds. Hud. 114. D. Asha is reported to have said, the messenger of Allah used to visit us, and it was his habit to kiss and caress us, and do actions other than sexual intercourse, until he reached the one whose turn was due and he stayed there. E. Abdullah ibn Masid is reported to have said in his commentary to Almighty Allah's saying, for ye have touched women, that it refers to actions that precede sexual intercourse for which ablution is obligatory. F. Umar is reported to have said, Kissing is to be considered among the touching acts, so perform ablution if you do. Al-Mustadrak, Volume 1, page 135. Hence, the opinion of Imam Malik and the substantial meaning of the legal verdict issued by Imam Ahmad in this respect are that the touching of a woman that nullifies ablution is that which is accompanied by desire. And this is the way they interpreted Almighty Allah's saying, for ye have touched women. That is why, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah regarded as weak the opinion of those, who interpreted mulamasa or touching, in the Quranic verse to mean mere touching without desire. In this regard, he says, as for the nullification of ablution with mere touching, it does agree with the original rulings of the Sharia, the unanimous agreement of the companions and the traceable traditions reported in this respect. Moreover, those who held this opinion have not based their ruling on a textual proof or an analogical deduction. So, if, touching, in Almighty Allah's saying, or ye have touched women, refers to touching with hands, kissing or the like, as said by Ibn Umar and others, then it is known that when touching is mentioned in the Quran or the Sunnah it refers to that which is accompanied by desire. We would like to cite here the following verse that reads, and touch them not, while ye are in retreat in the mosques. 
Here, it is not prohibited for the one who retreats to the mosque for devotion and worship to touch his wife without desire, but touching that is accompanied by desire is prohibited. Also, this includes the Quranic verses that read, O ye who believe, if ye wed believing women and divorce them before ye have touched them, then there is no period that ye should reckon, Al-Azam. 49. It is no sin for you if ye divorce women while yet ye have not touched them, Al-Baqarah. 236. For if he touches his wife without desire, then the waiting period is not required, and he is not required to pay her the whole dowry, according to the agreement of all Muslim scholars. So, whoever assumes that Almighty Allah is saying, or ye have touched women, includes general touching without desire, has exceeded far beyond the language of the Quran and that of people. For if, touching, in which a man and a woman are included is mentioned, it is known that it refers to touching with desire. Similarly, if, sexual intercourse, in which a man and a woman are included is mentioned, it is well known that it refers to actual sexual intercourse and nothing else. See the collection of Fatawa Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, volume 21, page 223 to 224. In another context, ibn Taymiyyah stated, the companions had debate regarding Almighty Allah's saying, or ye have touched women. Ibn Abbas, supported by a group, held the opinion that touching here refers to sexual intercourse and added, Allah is modest and generous, he euphemizes with what he wills in respect of what he wills. Ibn Taymiyyah added, this opinion is believed to be the most correct. The Arabs disagreed regarding the meaning of touching, does it refer to sexual intercourse or actions that precede it? The first group said that it refers to sexual intercourse, while the second said that it refers to actions that precede it. They sought the arbitration of Ibn Abbas, who supported the opinion of the first group and regarded that of the second as incorrect. By transmitting all these sayings, I mean to show that when the word al-mas or al-lams is used to mean what a man does to a woman, it does not refer to mere touching, but rather refers to either sexual intercourse, or actions that precede it, such as kissing, hugging, and any touching of the like, that is accompanied by desire and enjoyment. In Part 4, the hadiths that show women touched the Prophet will be discussed.